Hey everyone, and I'm gonna do my best to ignore that one because she's gonna be probably crying while I do this. But today is a really fun day. We are getting ready to do an event this weekend. So what that means is animals need to get moved around between our two different quarantine areas that we have set up in an entirely different building, which is super awesome. But what that means is that also now, the animals that we've had in quarantine for the last, some of them, a long time, uh, will be moving into this main building. So, you know, as I said before in the quarantine video, which if I can remember, you can go check it out right here. Um, it's always important, doesn't matter if you have two animals or 200 animals, you should always have your animals go through some sort of quarantining period, usually with some sort of like physical boundary and separation. That's the best way that you can start to begin with. And so a lot of times you have in a different room, in a closet, somewhere like that. We actually have ours now in a different building. And so because of that, they're now coming in here. Whenever you get an animal into quarantine, if you ever have animals in there, that quarantine time period starts all over again. So while we didn't get too, too many animals, we only got, you know, half a dozen or so, every time we got a new one, the quarantine period started over again. So some of the animals that we got back in the middle of August of 2021 are just now coming out of quarantine because we got other animals at the very end of October. So here we go. We're going to go check them out right now. To start things off with, we're going to start with our Pastave Het Clown female. So this girl we actually picked up from our good friends Creature Breeders up in Denver. So this girl's really nice, and I've said it before, and I'll say it many, many times, I love the Mojave gene, and really any of the animals that are in the Bell or the Blue-Eyed Leucistic complex, and this girl is a screamer. Like, she looks so pretty. Like, look at that. And her being heck clown, she'll be really cool to put into some of our other projects. Um, unfortunately, most of our clown stuff is all either pastel or banana stuff, so this way we're going to get some Mojave into there, and just a really, really nice looking girl. So, she's going to a 32 quart, so that's the size of the quart that we're going with here. So we're gonna put a little hide, we're gonna move this up a little bit. We're gonna put one there on the cool side. We're gonna put this one here for her there. Starting to get the little slim on a lot of our like more branchier type um, enrichment items. So we're gonna do that. Another one right there. This one right there. And this nice big leafy one, maybe right there, so that way it'll be more secure for her right there. And then we're gonna solo hand this again. So I apologize, although this will probably be the only one that I show here. We'll just do like the end result. Nice, clean, fresh water. This big water dish that'll help with humidity. If they wanna soak, they can, that's fine. But I already got all this uh, Repta chip bedding ready to go beforehand. So this is ready to roll. So here we go. First Previously one. mentioned, I'm not going to do every single one of these ones. So there's the little tub set up. This pretty much everybody's going into the 32 quarts unless I say otherwise. And then here is the only male ball python that we have going. Any guesses on what Morphe is? It's a single gene recessive going once, going twice. Desert Ghost. So this is our bell line Desert Ghost ball python. And forgive me for my hand shaking. A little chilly outside. Um, that night probably just need a little bit more caffeine during the day, but so the bell line that means it's a particular line that bell That is the established line of them um, But I'm always a big fan of outcrossing with different things and then I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit when we uh, Bring our one boa out of quarantine as well But he looks really cool and we have a girlfriend for him who's a little bit bigger than he is And I'll talk about her when she comes out, but this guy's really cool super looking forward to getting to desert ghost um, I may even plug him to multiple other females that are just a bunch of other, uh, you know, incomplete dominant combos that I can get het for things. Like, I can start getting, you know, Orange Dream het for Desert Ghost, Bamboo, Calico, or no, Bamboo, Orange Dream, Yellow Belly het for Desert Ghost. Like, that kind of cool stuff. So, here he is in this one, and moving right along. This is probably, yeah, not by probably, this is the biggest ball python that we had. Um, this came from a, another uh, breeder out of Colorado Springs. Um, she is a pewter mocha, so that is a three-gene animal. The pewter is a pastel-cinnamon combo, and then the mocha is another really cool morph that I like that is in the bell complex, similar to Mojave and Lesser, and then all of those, like Russo and Butter and all those other fun ones, too, and Bamboo, too. But I, like I said before, I really like all the bell line combos, and I think Mocha is just a really pretty clean morph in and of itself. So the pastel and the cinnamon adds to some really cool combos. I can start throwing 
Um, I think cinnamon looks good in a lot of different things. Plus mocha, I can always make more bells because that's what I really want to concentrate on is bells and pies and things like that. So I really like this girl. She's already off to nice, good start. She was only eating live for a while. Now we've uh, switched her over to frozen thaw and she's pounding uh, small rats really well. So look forward to breeding her in another year, maybe two years. But either way, she's really cool. I super look forward to that. And honestly, I would rather have her in a 41 quart. This is a little small for her. It's just moving everything around right now. I'm getting her set up in here because I have to move some other stuff around getting in preparation for the Reptile Expo that I'll be vending um, in preparation. Although at the time of this filming, sorry, a little fumbled over that. So we're vending a reptile show the weekend before that I'm filming this right now. And I just need to kind of get these guys out of the room and I will put them into a larger enclosure very soon into a 41 quart or possibly even the large 70 quarts. But... Here she is now. This girl who is being extremely squirmy is the girlfriend of the desert ghost male earlier. And I'm just going to put her down and talk a little bit. And yes, there is a bit of a bad shed, um, which there's a little bit of an excuse or explanation, whatever may have you. But this girl is a pastel het desert ghost orange ghost. So with that is in with ball pythons, the ghost, that's the hypo gene. And there's one line called orange ghost that is compatible with itself. And then the other hypo is not so much. And there's a couple different lines of them out there. Um, so this girl is het for both and she's a pastel. So she is, does have a little bit of a shedding issue. Um, these guys are in, now we have our quarantine animals in the other building as mentioned before. So figuring out humidity and stuff like that has been a bit of a struggle just in general. So a couple of the animals that I have since the move between moving back and forth and stress and all that other stuff, there are some bad shed issues, but most of them have now started to shed out of that. This girl is just holding off on me to make me look bad. But this girl is really cool. So we'll hopefully be producing some uh, pastel desert ghosts with him with the with our male before that will be possible het orange ghost and then you know further on down the road we'll see what else we can do but this makes our pair for the desert ghost because i like to do uh visual recessive to het recessive because recessive recessive can lead to some issues not so much with desert ghosts as like albino and some things but still that's what i like and yeah really like her i also like the i like the aberrant patterns that these guys like to throw like the desert ghost has some funky ones too so i like to see if while that it's difficult through, so. to pick favorites he might be my favorite out of all of the snakes that are coming through and he might end up being one of my favorite snakes just in general so this is our fourth gen max pink argentinium boa or bco so it's a species of boa constrictor not the imperators but it's a different subspecies which is the argentines these guys are really cool. They're known to be much larger, much heavier bodied, and usually a little bit more sedentary, um, which means they don't, they're do not they not as arboreal, but they still absolutely will make use of climbing branches. And as previously mentioned, I don't have a whole lot of those at the moment, but I have this little guy cool that comes from like an aquarium thing. He is amazing. I love this guy, and he has such a chill personality too. Um, Blue, our female, who is a 50% BCO, um, is a little bit feistier, and that may come from the short tail that she's bred with. Um, but either way, I really like this guy. So this is his tub. He's in one of the 74 quarts. Um, so a much larger tub. He's going to be in this one for a while until eventually he moves into an enclosure like most of the boas. But so here he is in this guy right here. I absolutely love, love his coloration. And unfortunately, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on him than the other ones just because I'm going to show a little bit of favoritism. I'm not, I don't like to do that, but just look at that pattern it is so so amazingly pretty it's it's great i love it i wish i need to get maybe some better lighting in here this fluorescent lighting kind of gives it a weird hue with that pink that he has um and actually he's going into shed right now so he's a little dull but normally it is a little bit more bright bright pink not so much like his water dish um but still really really beautiful and i love that kind of like granity looking pattern and then the head stamps and the head shape and coloration of the Argentine boas is amazing. And with the max stain, the the max pink line, it just looks really really cool. Um, there's a buddy of mine who might be willing to part with his girl, who's uh, much larger and would be ready to breed in the next year or two. Um, he won't be breeding for three or four years probably, um, but I'm looking for what will eventually be a group of breeding Argentinians, which would be you know. A female max pink, a male outcrop, uh, a male max pink, 
and then a female, like a really dark, really cool pattern one to put with him, and then another male that would be different or really dark or really white to put with the female uh, Max Pink. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But just look at that head stamp. It is so cool. And I might do a whole video just about the Argentinian boas, but I just have him. So I was waiting to get a little bit more size on him. And I can talk about blue, but she is technically the hybrid. But either way, really, really cool. But I spent a little bit of time on him. Sorry, guys. I just, I really am excited uh, about this guy. He was super cool. I've been wanting one of these for a very, very long time. Uh, Bob, with uh, Bob, who does the Max Pink line. Great guy, super informative, very open, likes to share, help out, and then gets cool little updates for his animals. So this will be a really cool, fun one to share with him. So, but that being said, that's the last of these guys. Now we're going to move on to the couple of Kalubas. Okay, so I will firmly establish that this guy does not like me. And uh, he's already in here because I already took one pop from him and I don't like to show that on camera if I can help it. So we just went right to putting him in here. So... Any other guesses for what this guy is, people out there? Going once, going twice, he's a North American colubrid. This is actually a male black pine snake. These guys are really, really cool. And so because I like to go thematic with that stuff, I got some uh, artificial pine needles in there and some cork bark with there. And this is cypress mulch, which is similar to pine, just not with his, you know, they'll hold the moisture a little bit better. Um, and then this is his whole little setup. I absolutely love Pituophis. That's the genus that bulls and pines and gophers belong to. I absolutely love them. Their attitudes are really cool. They're fun to work with. Much different than usually the laid back ball pythons. But this guy is a spitfire. And honestly, I'm surprised he's not hissing and showing off why he's so famous. I'm not going to intentionally upset him. But if he does it on his own, then really cool. But so this is another one showing off that I am always really male heavy with most of my animals but not necessarily planning on breeding these guys because these guys are actually an endangered species in the part of the country where they're from. So you either need to have one and sell them locally or you need to buy an interstate commerce permit um, from your you at local uh, fish and wildlife department um, that allows you to be able to do that. And the same goes with like, you know, the Eastern Indigos and the uh, Louisiana Pine Snakes. So these guys are actually in the same genus as the northern pine snakes and the southern slash Florida pine snakes. Um, these guys are just for different subspecies. The Lodgini, which is really, really cool, versus Melanolucus, Melanolucus, which is the northern pine snakes. But the Lodgini are really cool. They aren't necessarily all born this black. As they shed and get older, similar to a lot of other snakes, they get more dark, more black, but they can still retain some of those kind of stripy things. Um, there are even some that are like chocolatey colored. There are some that stay striped and there are even some pied ones out there. A couple people like uh, Jay Jacoby is working with that pied gene. Another really cool dude up in Canada. I believe they're stampede reptile or stampede colubrid or something or serpents, but they're really, really cool. But this guy's really cool. I love these guys so, so much. Get, and he's being really, really helpful. I was very careful about how I took him out, but like I said, I already took a pop from him, but he's normally yelling at me at this point. Um, but he's really cool. I look for it as he gets older and bigger. They usually calm down a little bit, but we'll see. Um, hope his boyfriend, the uh, male uh, Louisiana pine snake, uh, has gotten much bigger. He's a year older and he still hates my guts, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, this guy is really cool. And I have one more Kaluber to show you on this video. So there he goes. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Look at that. Sorry, he's just being really perfect, so I wanted to show him off a little bit longer. And this little one is really cool. This is our new, I say new, she's been in quarantine since August. Um, like I said uh, before, some of them have been here for a while. This is our female gray banded king snake, or the Alterna, which is the uh, Latin name for these guys, for the species of the gray banded king snake. Um, the, there's a lot of different cool, crazy uh, patterns, and there's even several morphs out there. And, um, and like the patterns of the, of the actual like bands, they call it the gray bands, vary a lot to the point where there's almost no red. There are some that are no red, some that are more striped than these cool banded colors. This particular phase is called the Blair's phase. Uh, I incorrectly stated in my species spotlight video that it's the Alterna phase. Um, and someone very quickly pointed out that that is not correct, but I, I openly admitted that I did not do say that correctly. I was told that was the phase by the person that produced uh, Nez Pierce, our male, 
But, you know, that's fine. Either way, this is a Blair's phase. She's much more orange. Sorry, I got to keep her. There we go. Um, she's much more orange than Nez Pierce. Nez Pierce is, has a much deeper red color. But either way, I really like these guys. These are super cool, very chill king snakes. Um, they're not as common as like the California king snakes, and they usually don't get quite as large either. And honestly, if you're looking for a king snake that is fairly chill, these guys make great, great options for a little bit more you know, docile or demeanor. Um, the only problem is the babies come sometimes uh, have a real trouble getting started eating. Um, they're lizard eaters a lot of the times out in the wild. So if you're going to get one, make sure you get a nice well-started uh, baby or uh, that's been eating very consistently or you get like a yearling or an adult. These guys are really, really cool. So I technically have one more on the animals that are coming out of quarantine, but I will not be showing him off in this video because he's going to a different building into the cool, the cool weather reptile building. So I'm going to do a whole other video about that because that's going to be a whole other explanation. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and got to see some really cool animals coming out of quarantine. Maybe some ones that you didn't know I had or that I don't often talk a whole lot about. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know down in the comments. If there's anything you want to see or hear me talk about, please feel free to ask. Let me know. Give suggestions, anything like that. Hope you're having a great day and we will check you next time.